Accuplacer. Okay, the first question here is 5 plus 2i times 6 minus 3i. Now, i is uh, the square root of negative 1. It's not a like a variable type of thing. So we're going to need to foil these together, and then we're going to have to realize something about uh, i on this problem. So let's go ahead and do that. And I have the problems written up here. So we foil these together. So we'll take the 5 times the 6 and get, uh, let me just go over here to write this down, it gives me 30. And then this is 5 times a minus 3i, which is a minus 15i. Now go to your enter. Let's see. We got a plus 12i. And we have a minus 6i squared. Now we can combine the like terms here and get 30. Minus 15i plus 12i is a minus 3i. And then minus, that's combining these two right here, minus 15i plus 12i is 3i. And then minus 6i squared. Well, minus 6 times what is i squared? Well, if it was just an x, it would just be x squared and we couldn't do anything with it. But i, let me do this off the side here, i is actually the square root of negative 1. That's the, what i is. So i squared is equal to the square root of negative 1 squared. The square cancels out the square root, so it's negative 1. So i squared equals negative 1. That's a fact to know on this. Or know that i equals the square root of negative 1 either way. So we can replace the i squared with negative 1. And that gives me 30 uh, minus 6 times minus 1 is plus 6. And 30 plus 6 is 36 minus that 3i. And that's answer uh, d on that one. Okay, the next one says uh, f of x equals tangent 2x. Now, this is a trick question. There's usually about four or so on the uh, placement test on the COM section. You don't have to get any right to, uh, to pass it. Uh, so, but if you can get a few right, that's uh, always helpful. Okay, wants to know what the fundamental period of, of uh, f of x equals tangent 2x is. Well, f of x is just function notation. We're saying basically y equals tangent 2x. Well, the fundamental period of f of x or y equals tangent x is pi. And then what you need to do is, if you can hold on to that fact, you divide the fundamental period, which is pi, by the coefficient in front of the x. So pi divided by 2, then, would be the answer to that problem. And that's uh, problem number 2. Uh, the fundamental period of cotangent x is also pi. These all work the same way here. Then the other ones you might see are sine of x, whose fundamental period is 2 pi. And say, same way with cosine x, its fundamental period is 2 pi. And then you would divide by the number beside the x. OK, the next one says uh, the expression, the absolute value of x to the fourth minus 5 is equivalent to what? And it gives you some choices. Well. If you take any number and you raise it to the fourth power, it already makes it positive. See, if x is negative or positive, when you raise it to the fourth power, you'll get a positive number. So actually, the absolute values aren't needed on this expression. So actually, this is the same as x to the fourth minus 5. And that's all they're looking for on that one. And that's answer C. OK, problem 4 says, which of the following, and it gives you about five choices, and usually there's five choices per problem on this. Which of the following is parallel to this equation right here, the graph of this equation? Well, the slope of this equation is 2. And so therefore, parallel lines have uh, the same slope. So we're looking for a equation whose slope is also 2. Now, if we check the choices here, choice A was 3y plus 2x equals 3. If we get the slope of this thing by solving it for y, we would get 3y equals a negative 2x plus 3. And if you divide that by 3, we would see that this slope is negative 2 thirds. So that isn't going to cut it. Let's check b. b is uh, 3y plus 3x equals 1. And if we solve this for y, we get 3y equals a negative 3x plus 1. And if we divide this by 3, the slope would be negative 3 over 3 or negative 1. So that's not 2. So that one wouldn't be parallel. If we check C, it's 6y minus 12x 
equals 5. If we solve this one for y, it would be 6y equals 12x. I'm just taking the minus 12x to the other side, plus 5. Divide through by 6 on both sides, and I get y equals, well, 12x over 6 is 2x plus the 5, 6. But really, this is the thing that matters right here. So the slope of this line is 2. The slope of my original line is 2, so these two run parallel. So the answer is C. Okay, let's go ahead on to 5 here. And uh, we'll take a look here at the uh, uh, questions here that we had. So there's problems 1, 2, 3, 4, and here's 5. 5 says for f of x equals 3 raised to the x minus 2, then what is f of 1? Well, let's go ahead and do that problem. Okay, on problem number 6, again, it was f of x equals 3 raised to the x minus 2, and it asked what is f of 1? Well, f of 1 just means put 1 in for x. If I put 1 in for x, it's, it would be 3 raised to the 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so it's 3 to the negative 1. Now, here you need to know that negative exponents, a negative exponent means to reciprocate the base, so this would be the same as 1 over 3, and that would be the answer to that problem. That's answer C. On problem number 6, it says, now problem number 6 takes a while to do. It says that there is a uh, point that goes through the origin. The origin is a coordinate 0, 0, and has a slope of 2. Well, this would be the y-intercept, and this is the slope. So in the form y equals mx plus b, it would be y equals 2x plus 0, or in other words, y equals 2x. That would be the equation of that line. Now it says another line goes through these points, 2, 1, and this point, 0, negative 4. Well, we need to get the equation that goes of the line that goes through these points. Now that uh, equation would be y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope. So to get the slope, we'll subtract off the y's. So I'll take 1 minus a minus 4, 1 minus a negative 4, over 2 minus 0. And if I work that out, 1 minus a negative 4 is the same as 1 plus 4, or 5, and 2 minus 0 is 2, so I get 5 halves, or 2.5. Now I need this entire equation, so this is the slope, right here is the slope of that line, this is the m. And the b, the y-intercept, is given to you. Here's the y-intercept right there. So that equation would be y equals 2.5x minus 4 is the y-intercept. Now it says that this line and this line intersect at a point um, t comma r. And it wants to know what is the value of t. Okay, so in other words, this is the x value, this is the y value. We need to figure out what x values where these two uh, intersect. Well, if y equals 2x here, and y equals the same variable, y equals 2.5x minus 4 here, then I can set these two expressions equal to each other. I can set the 2x equal to the 2.5x minus 4. Now to solve this, I'll add 2x to both sides to get 0.5x, and I'll add the 4 to both sides to get 4 over here, and then I have to divide by 0.5 on both sides, and if I take 4 divided by 0.5, that's the same as 4 divided by a half, and 4 divided by a half is the same as 4 times 2, which would give me 8. So the x part of the point of intersection, the t right there, is 8. If I needed to find out the r, I would substitute this 8 back into either one of these equations. Like if I substitute, this is the answer, 8. But if I wanted to know what the y is, then I would substitute the 8 in for x, and I get 2 times 8 is 16. Also, that's the same y value if I would substitute the 8 into this one right here. Uh, 8 times 2 and a half, well, that'd be 16, plus half of 8 is 4, so that'd be 20, and 20 minus 4 is 16. So I get the same answer using that one. Now, if they wouldn't have given me the y-intercept right here, I would have still figured out the slope and got something like y equals 2.5x uh, plus b, b standing for the y-intercept. And then what I would have done is just substitute in one of the points. Now, this one gave me the y-intercept, but let's say it didn't give me a y-intercept. Let's say it would have given me two points, like 2, 1, and some other point. Well, then I could just have substituted in the 2, 1 into uh, the equation here, this is the x and this is the y, and I would get something like 1 equals 2.5 times x, which is 2, plus b, 
and I'll get the same y-intercept here. That gives me uh, 1 equals 2 times 2.5 is 5 plus b. And subtracting the 5 from both sides, I would get b equals negative 4. Subtract 5 from both sides, you get b equals negative 4, which is the exact same y-intercept I got before. So this is how you do it if they don't give you the y-intercept.